G'day, I'm Scotty Tucker. Just want to have a quick word about surface aerators. So the reason why we want to aerate dams is because the more oxygen you can get into the water, the more aerobic bacteria you can get in the water, and aerobic bacteria quickly digests the crap that's on the bottom, all the years and decades of leaf litter, um, fish waste, duck, duck crap, all that sort of stuff ends up on the bottom and becomes compost fertiliser. And in dams that aren't aerated, you end up with anaerobic conditions on the bottom with little or no oxygen, and in those conditions, anaerobic bacteria populate and they clean that waste up but they do it really really slowly so generally in man-made dams the waste builds up over time adding aeration to it will naturally increase the numbers of aerobic bacteria quickly get rid of odor start chipping away at that uh, sludge layer on the bottom which means that the algae and weed are being outcompeted for the available nutrients now surface aerators are really really good um, in terms of they, they're very intensive so they'll put a lot of oxygen in the water really really quickly um, so that means if you've got a small dam and a you know an appropriately sized surface aerator you may just turn it on and off at certain times of the day and that's enough to um, to do the job uh, if you've got a large dam uh, you may combine it with a subsurface system and do the two where you or a deep dam and you bring the water up from the bottom and then you put a surface aerator around near a foot valve um, and really high, highly oxygenate those sorts of areas what that will do is help reduce the amount of biofilm um, and biofouling in your irrigation equipment filters pumps that sort of thing um, because a lot of those organisms are, that grow on the inside of pipes thrive in anaerobic conditions Conditions. Surface aerators are good for, um, from an aesthetic point of view, you can have the aerating fountains that um, throw water up into the air and uh, look somewhat or ornamental as well. Pay note, they need to run with propeller though, anything else is just a fountain. And fountains don't aerate, they, they, they move nowhere near as much water as what a propeller driven surface aerator does. Kind of like if you had a, a one horsepower uh, outboard boat motor sitting next to a one horsepower pool pump, the boat motor is going to move a hell of a lot more water for the same amount of power. Uh, surface aerators are also very good in um, aquaculture situations, commonly used in fish farms because you get a lot of oxygen in the water really, really quickly. The more oxygen you've got in that sort of situation, the higher the numbers of uh, fish populations you can stock. It's also good in golf courses um, for the ornamental reasons as well as the aeration benefits. And they're also good in waste water, um, special uh, types of aerators that should be able to mix the water as well as aerate it because when it comes to waste water, it's very important that you not just get the oxygen in the water but you distribute it throughout the uh, throughout the pond or the dam quite well to enable all those particulate uh, organic material that's in the water to be munched by munched on by um, by bacteria um, surface aerators uh, are good for about sort of four to five meters deep um, because what they'll do is throw water up into the air the air will slightly cool it'll hit the water become a little bit more uh, that it's left that's a little bit warmer so it becomes a little bit more dense so it goes down and then sort of circulates around in, in that sort of motion um, but once you start getting into do too deep of water they're not going to be um, very useful for doing that in which case you should look at subsurface or the combination of subsurface and surface um, surface aerators also work by the rippling effect so um, when the water gets thrown up and hits the water, it creates lots and lots of ripples. That gives you a larger surface area, which means there's more gas exchange between the air and the water. You can degas the nasty gases, increase the oxygen um, compared to just flat water. So important to think about um, you know, where the surface aerator is positioned in the dam to make sure that it's not um, uh, getting blocked by an island or too close to a bank or something like that. You want it to, um, to distribute. Surface aerator is also good for fishing dams. Um, uh, when you do run into trouble in summer, if, you, um, uh, if you're needing uh, high levels of aeration um, to support fish, what will happen is that those fish will generally congregate around those areas where the oxygen is. So they're very good for uh, emergency aeration for um, to sustaining um, healthy fish during times of need. Uh, some of the, the cons with surface aerators is that if you're swimming in the water, if your dam's a swimming dam, there is going to be power in the water. So that, you know, that needs to be considered. Um, at a minimum, if you're still going to be planning on do, doing that, then you want to make sure that you turn the surface aerator off every time you go in the water. But probably best not to do that and just use a, a subsurface system. The surface aerators use more power than a subsurface system does because you're pumping water, not air. So um, the requirement for, for more uh, power is greater. Uh, surface aerators, you also need to have power at the water's edge. You don't want to be having to drag um, your pump cable all the way back to a pump shed because at some point when that needs to come out, then you've got to run tracer wires all the way through and it's a pain in the bum. So if you haven't got power at the water's edge, you either need to use a solar surface aerator or bring power up to the water's edge so that you can just connect it and then easily remove it for repair or replacement in years to come. 
Uh, so yeah, that's the, the key attributes of uh, surface aerator.